Bonjour, or shall we say Dermat today. That's hello in Breton, the native language of Bretagne, or Brittany as it's known in English. The scenic peninsula may be the least French part of the country, and it is this week's stop on our virtual tour. Je m'appelle Sharon. Hey, je m'appelle Leah. We have a fun episode today with history, prehistory, language, literature, and nature. Also, a special guest. We're on a trip of our own, but not in France. We'll f we're filming from Caroline du Nord today. That's North Carolina. We left snow on the ground at our home in northern Michigan to enjoy spring here where it comes on time. So back to Brittany. If we were actually there today, we'd also be experiencing spring with temperatures around 60 and fresh coastal breezes. What else might we experience? Well, humans have inhabited the region since Neanderthal times and prehistoric peoples left structures that can be visited today. Many megalithic sites are on Brittany's southern coast. The Karnak Stones are well known. And if you like nature, the rugged coastline attracts many birds and marine mammals. Seals, dolphins, sharks. <laughs> Inland, there are large forests, including one believed to be King Arthur's Brocéliande. The principal cities are Rennes and Nantes. Rennes has been listed as the best city in France for a foreigner to live. Brittany also has many gorgeous villages and more than 800 little islands off the coast beckon for a day trip or a retreat. One of those almost islands is Saint Malo, connected to the mainland by a narrow strip. This city, walled city, was a haunt of pirates and the home of Jacques Carrier, the Frenchman who claimed Canada for France. It was also the setting for one of my favorite novels, a favorite novel for many actually. The Pulitzer Prize winner, All the Light We Cannot See, is mostly set in Saint-Malo during World War II. While we're on books, I have another recommendation, especially for those who may want to visit or live in Brittany. New Yorker Mark Greenside penned a very pleasant memoir of his relocation to Brittany. I'll Never Be French recounts his life in a small Breton village. He is respectful of and awed by his Breton neighbors who rescue him from multiple catastrophes and integrate him into their community. Honoré de Balzac also wrote a novel set in Brittany. Le Chouan is a military tale and love story set in the aftermath of the French Revolution. I haven't read it, but I'm adding it to my list. Now, for a little more on the traditional language of the region, I'd like you to meet my nephew. Dalton is a high school Spanish teacher, and like his cousin Leah, he is an enthusiast of languages and linguistics. Uh, everyone thinks of French as the language that's spoken in France, and that's true, but there are also a lot of uh, regional dialects. Even just 50 years ago, not everyone spoke French in France. So, what do you know about Breton? Um, it's a Celtic language, the language of the native people of uh, Brittany. And uh, Breton is actually like uh, more closely related to um, Welsh and Cornish. Yeah, I think there's a lot of Celtic languages. One's the, of the in, that that are in Great Britain, but all, there's a lot of languages like Cornish and Welsh that have um, expanded beyond, um, and and they they form their own little category of Celtic languages. Um, and once once there, then then they start taking on features of the local languages like French, and and having um, and, and then become their own languages. Um, and so. Um, definitely not not a, a dialect of French whatsoever. Um, its own unique language. And what's the population right now of speakers? Uh, it's uh, approximately two hundred thousand. So it's considered a like a, a severely endangered language. Yeah, there's hundreds of languages around the world, um, and then there's a lot of endangered ones. We have lots here in uh, North America too, um, and they seem to be all throughout out Europe, little pockets of language just slowly dying out. Um, and I, what, I, what I think is interesting about Breton and what I've studied of it is that 
its vocabulary is Celtic and it's got a lot of vocabulary but but it's since been removed from the Celtic language so there's lots of French loan words there's lots of influence from from French and I see it uh, a lot in, in the structure and the way words are written a lot of um, uh, apostrophes uh, con contracting um, two words together which is a feature of French that's unique to the Indo-European languages um, you see it in Portuguese as well um, so I think that's one of the most fascinating things and, and, and most times newer words like the word for internet word for uh, anything created in the last well the last century is is going to be I probably identical to to what it would be in French just like it would be maybe in English so I find uh, I find these small little pockets although they're they're dying out I find these languages very interesting I think it's useful to learn little expressions from these dying languages because um, it, it allows you to draw and have connections with people um, in, a, in a less uh, superficial way uh, in the region. And uh, I think one of my favorite um, expressions, or maybe sayings, I forget who said it, maybe Maya Angelou, was if you speak to someone in their own languages, you're speaking to their heart, but if you speak to them um, in, in another language, you're just speaking to their mind. So I think that's a, that's a wonderful reason to learn a, a language like Breton. That's all for today. Next week, we'll be showing you some of the food of Brittany. So be sure to join us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please leave comments or questions. A bientôt. A bientôt.